Hey CLF, thanks for joining us today. On today's episode, we're gonna be covering questions on gender roles, so stay tuned. Thanks for joining us today, CLF. We are once again here with Pastor Dave and myself, Perry Sorensen. I'm the worship leader here. And uh, one, as always, we're just here sitting down, kind of reviewing and having a discussion over last Sunday's sermons, uh, answering your questions to give you clarity over some of the things that were said, mm -hmm. right? So, cool. so on that note, let's hop in. This past Sunday, you went ahead and everything was gender roles in the church, right? Mm -hmm. And in the church, and I'm sure we're going to talk more about that. But you yeah. gave us this big idea, which said, God has given each of us our genders and has given each gender a role in the church. Each gender has equal value, yet a different role. Mm -hmm. When we submit to God's design, every person is honored and useful in God's work. Mm -hmm. Along with that, can you give us a summary of what you were preaching on uh, last Sunday? Yeah, yeah, a, yeah. A, summary, a summary. And go. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I think the big idea kind of summarizes that. I mean, I, you know, obviously in our culture, you've got the debate on did God really give us our genders? Mm -hmm. um, and then you have the debate on <clears throat> if God did give us genders, then what, what are the roles? Mm -hmm. uh, and basically, you have a culture that is warring against God, that is also going to war against God. Uh, the idea of gender, because that our gender says something about God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it says that we were created in the image mm -hmm. of God. So, so therefore, that's why I put the the big idea the way I did it. You know, is to say something particular about gender. Mm -hmm. And the other issue is <clears throat> in First Timothy, Paul's talking about life in the church, mm -hmm. and so the question really is, what do gender? What did the gender roles look like in the church? Mm -hmm. And I think that's important. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 5 and Colossians 3 are gender roles in the family. Mm -hmm. Those are the only places that we can clearly identify in the New Testament mm -hmm. where we're, ta we're talked about gender roles, mm -hmm. right? So those are the only ones that we can speak to authoritatively. Sure. And so I, I kind of wanted to, you know, just take on the first part of that text in 1 Timothy 2, 8 through 15, Kind of get through verse 13 a little bit mm -hmm. um, and give some, some touching on a few things. And then we'll dive into more uh, 13 through 15 this week. Yeah, in yeah. part two. Yeah, part two. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. The most profound yeah. title ever. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think the follow up to, to that, though, is, um, and it was really in your first point on this Sunday, and you were talking about culture. And still, yet, we get the question this text was written in a culture very different from our own. Mm -hmm. You could argue. Is it or is it not? However, the, the question is, how can this be meant to be the same then as it is today? Yeah, and I think that especially the, the discussion is about the fact that you have Paul, who many thought was writing to a male-dominated society. Yep, exactly. Right. Well, I think that, that where, I, where I see Scripture, and I think most theologians see it operating, is mm -hmm. anytime Paul writes about gender roles mm -hmm. where there's confusion, 1 Corinthians 11... Uh, and First Timothy 2 are two places that we could see that. Mm -hmm. He always refers back to the created order. Mm -hmm. So You're talking about Genesis? Talk about, yeah, uh, yeah, right. yeah, Genesis 1 through 3. Right. And so the reason Paul does that is because the created order of what we see in God's design mm -hmm. um, transcends culture. Sure. Therefore, no matter if you are in, uh, like I was years ago, teaching to... Um, a group of Indians who are in a matriarchal system, sure. right. or if I'm in <clears throat> another culture that's patriarchal, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the created order transcends all that. Mm -hmm. So if I'm speaking to a, a matriarchal society, then I'm, I'm going to refer back to the created order. Right. If I'm speaking to a patriarchal society, I'm returning, referring back to the created order. Right. That's, I think, the beauty of what God's Word does, is it, right. it basically transcends culture. So it says, okay, here's the culture. Let's then look at what God intended. Right. And I think that's what Paul does. And so right. um, that's why I said in the beginning of the sermon is um, let's not think that Paul was a male, a male chauvinist here. Right. Paul was writing with some delicacy on and, and gentleness about what the issues were that he was addressing in Ephesus. Right. 
And I really can get the heart of, you know, gentle Pastor Paul here sure. making some corrections. Sure. And, you know, so. But, but it can be hard. And I think the difficult thing is, is, is exactly what you were saying right there is, is that piece about um, how we're always looking through things from our culture, trying to make it fit scripture instead yes. of us of the other taking way scripture okay. and trying to make it fit our culture, right? And and mm -hmm. we take all those modern biases, right, yep. in, into play. I agree. Even though, even if we say we don't have a bias, you do. Yeah. You, you do. <laughs> yeah. And I, I mean, I think that we breathe, I think that we breathe the air of humanism that more than we ever thought. And I think sure. that we breathe the air of, of, of feminism more than we think sure and we breathe the air of, of chauvinism more than we think sure and so i think that we we've just that's where scripture has to be our guide um in in this discussion and and rather than our own personal biases sure, sure. so uh, another question that gets uh thrown in this one um here it talks about uh modesty what is a good definition of modesty isn't modesty something that is defined by culture yeah, and I think I think you could say that to some degree it is defined by the culture and the world around of what's appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so you know, obviously you go to um, some parts of Africa, and the the modesty version is going to look way different sure. than the modesty here. Sure. Um, furthermore, in France, it may look different than it is in England, yeah. right? Per se. So I think that you you have to define some of that culturally, mm -hmm. but I also think that uh, you know. The Lord's commands are pretty clear. You know, what needs to be covered should be covered. Mm -hmm. um, as well as, um, like in the, in, the, in the culture of Ephesus, mm -hmm. was not dressing like those who were selling themselves. Right, right. And so I think it's important to, to look at distinctive cultures on what, what's effeminate, what's masculine, sure. and, and matching some of that up there. You know, in our, in our culture, I think some ask, you know, I get asked a question a lot about, okay, show us so girls wear bikinis and right. yoga pants and right. all these various specifics. Right. And my response to that is generally, what, what do the parents say? Sure. What does the husband, wife agree with? Sure. Um, what, what are they portraying? What are they revealing? Right. Um, and I think all those questions have to be addressed in the home. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they need to be talked about at a young age. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, I, I've said before, what children do in ages two and three that we think are cute, we have to ask when they're 15 and 17, will those right. same things be cute? Right, right. Um, and they won't. Right. So we have to look at those things. Yeah. So I, you know, you, you, we can give like, okay, here's all the standards of modesty. Sure. When I don't think scripture does that, I think scripture basically yeah. gives you some guidelines to say, look around you. People know what's immodest and what's not immodest. Sure. And, and then fit within the, the, sure. the biblical framework of covering yourself appropriately. Sure. Very good. Yeah, I think that's helpful. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. It, yet to be determined, I guess. It is. The, uh, so, like, can, I, can I say something on that? Yeah, go for it. Um, so, like, as, uh, in, like, in our home, I'll give you an example. In our home, uh, we have three beautiful daughters, and uh, I, have a, I have a lovely wife, and we have made this discussion with our kids mm -hmm. from the beginning mm -hmm. um, to the point that, like, my girls, even at whatever age they are now, uh, H Hannah's married now to Grant, and they have this discussion in their own home. Mm -hmm. But we, we talk, my girls will come and say, Dad, does this look modest? Right. Mom, what are, you, what are your thoughts on this? Mm -hmm. um, and I appreciate that mm -hmm. because they, I feel like that there's a, there's a, a gentleness and there's also a graciousness about it. And they, they're very protective of that. Right. And I, I think if we can keep those kind of dialogues open with our kids, I think the better sure. it is for them. Sure. Absolutely. No, that, I, I like that. So now it's time to get in the weeds a little bit. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so here comes, here comes some of the hard hitters when it comes to gender stuff. So Romans 16, 1 in NIV, it says, I commend you. I commend to you. This is Paul talking, obviously. Yeah. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a deacon of the church and uh, in uh and then in the ESV, it says, I commend to you, our sister Phoebe, a servant mm -hmm. of the church. Yep. What do you do with that? Well, I mean, what I do with that is I look at the totality of Scripture. Um, I mean, obviously, you've got um, a variety of places for people to land. You know, this, this church, before we merged with it, North Roseburg Evangelical Free, they had women deacons. Mm -hmm. And we don't. Um, part, part of our reasoning for not having women deacons is uh, two. Mm -hmm. One is in Acts chapter 6, when you, when you look at the first original beginning of the role of the deacon, sure. it says, choose out from among yourselves seven men mm -hmm. who are full of the spirit and full of wisdom. Right. And they pulled out seven guys that they chose to take these roles. Yep. And then in First Timothy chapter 3, uh, there's some language in the text that says uh, deacons' wives. Right. 
And some have said, well, that actually means women deacons. Right. And I and I don't I don't see that in the text per se, and neither do the rest of our elders. Sure. Now, we don't think that that issue is like one of these close-handed gender role issues. Sure. Uh, we do think it's an issue, though, that we should be talking about and, sure. and discussing, which we have as elders, and we, sure. we just haven't seen um, the conclusion where women are serving that role. Now, mm-hmm. the question would be, what would be the difference between a woman serving right. and the role of a deacon? Right. And I think the role of a deacon has a little bit of authority to it. Mm-hmm. Um, when you look at, they're, they're serving at, and we'll talk about this in two weeks in our uh, study on uh, deacons, uh, or in three weeks in our study on deacons, mm-hmm. but you're going to find that that's an, it's, an author, it's, a, it's a role that is given, it's a role that's recognized that they, they are serving in this particular role. Mm-hmm. It also says likewise deacons, meaning in similar qualities of, a, right. of an elder, right. which we saw that last week and we'll see it again, that it's, a, it's gender exclusive to men. Right. Um, I think that that that's why I would say. Well, I think that that I think that the ESV has it more accurate, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I, I, I have men that I deeply respect that they have women deacons in sure. the church. Sure. Um, I think because it has authority in the role. Right. I think we have to be very cautious with right. it. Well, you know, and and yet this right here is a prime example of how some would say, well, see, you're just inhibiting people or women from being in a place of authority. What would you yeah. What would you say to that? Yeah, my response to that would be um, probably not. Yeah, <laughs> um, I, I think I think that we limit. There's the thing I, I I think that I get nervous about is we. How do I say this? Um, we don't understand the influence that godly women have upon godly men who might be in authority, hmm. right? So um, you, you, look in, you look in the examples of Scripture. You look at Eve's influence on Adam. Mm-hmm. Look at, and I'm going to use this one this week, look at Sarai's influence on Abram. Sure. I mean, here's a story. God gives Abram the command, this thing, the promise, you're going to have a son in a year. Right. It doesn't come along fast enough, and right. Sarai says, Hey, why don't you take Hagar to uh, right. have a baby with? And he's like, okay. And okay. he just off to the tent right. he goes. Right, right. Um, <clears throat> and you're like, uh, where? Right. You want to talk about the influence of a oh, woman man. over a man? Oh man. So I I tell people often, you know, like in the marriage relationship, I think about the life in the church as well. Sure. That you have the 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 husband, pastor as well, elder, mm-hmm. and and women serve as like chief of staff. Sure. I mean. They, they're setting agendas. They're helping, and I mean sure. that appropriately. Sure. They're setting appropriate agendas, and they're helping men. They're right. influencing them deeply right. if men are doing it right. right. <clears throat> now, my question is about that. Um, does that limit their role at all? Well, the answer would be no. It only, sure. limits, it only limits their authoritative voice. Sure. You know, the authoritative ability to say, no, this is the decision that needs right. to be made. Right. Um, but it doesn't limit their influence. Right. And that's the part I worry about. I I worry that women think, I don't have the position of authority, Mm -hmm. therefore I don't have any influence. And my response to that would be, oh, no, no, no. No, that's not not true at all. Matter of fact, we need you to speak into some situations that we don't, we need clarity on. I I gave the example here, um, um, I can't remember, might have been in the service on Sunday, about um, we uh, we had a family meeting about some things, and mm-hmm. and one of the gals in the family meeting had some concerns. Mm-hmm. And during our elder meeting, I text her during the elder meeting to ask her input on sure. some situations. And I so we so valued her input. She's right. an expert in a particular field. We felt strongly we needed to hear from her. Right. And and our elder board leaned in to listen to her recommendations and her right. concerns. And I so appreciated that. Right. My thought would be if that woman thought, well, I'm not an elder, therefore I don't have a voice. Mm-hmm. We're limited. Sure. <laughs> I would say, you no, know, <clears throat> she has a voice. Sure. And we wouldn't believe in the body of Christ. That's exactly right. And so I, I think that we get hung up on this issue of authority mm-hmm. and we forget the role of influence. Right. Well, it, it kind of goes hand in hand. Authority, submission. You know, if, if women are, own, are, are if, excuse me, if men are the only ones in places of authority, then eventually you're going you're gonna to come to the conclusion of saying, see, you, you women are the only ones that are supposed to submit. When that is completely inaccurate, That's we right. all submit to all of something. Us. That's right. You know, and even for the elders of the church, <coughs> they're submitting to God, right? Well, so, right. So, so, so submission is just something we naturally do, or well, we should. I, yeah, well, I was going to say, I mean, my, the beginning of my sermon, my introduction for this coming week is the fact that 
we're, we're not, we don't get bothered by authority and submission in the workplace. Sure. Right. We don't get bothered by it in the schools. Right. We don't get bothered by it anywhere. We don't get bothered by it anywhere. Right. The military, you better have some authority oh, and submission. Um, so, but we do it in the church and right. we do it in the family. Right. And you have to ask, those are the only, it's funny to me, because those are the only two areas that God speaks to sure. in the Bible directly in the New Testament. And yet we as Christians are getting hung up on those two areas. Right. When I'm like, no, wait, stop for a minute. God has already spoken to these things. Right. We should rest in confidence. This means if, if I'm if I function in my God-given gender and God-given role, sure. God's going to give me joy and satisfaction in the sure. midst of this, right? Now, one thing that we talked about in our Sunday our review session mm -hmm. that I think people fail to recognize is a truth of God that is misapplied right. does not take away the truth. Right. So... So because we see bad examples of this, I mean, mm -hmm. good grief, we've seen bad leadership in the church, sure. terrible example. Sure. We've seen bad leadership in, in the home. Mm -hmm. That does not mean that the, 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 the truth mm -hmm. of a woman submitting to a man in the church right. and, a, and a woman submitting to her, her husband in the home, that those truths are invalid. Right. No, it means they were misapplied. Right. And so I think that that's where we kind of need to keep, right. get our minds right, right too. We've probably that, seen it That's still so much. what's supposed to be emulated. That's what's ideal, yes. right? But just because something, it, it, it's not it's not happening that way, doesn't mean we just throw it out. That's exactly right. Yeah. right. How, so uh, along those lines, you know, what, what happens when the man isn't leading? Uh, does this permit a woman to teach? Or even I can throw in another question from one of our viewers. Um, can couples teach together? Yeah, let's take the first one. Okay. Uh, I'm a little hung up on that one, okay. and I'll tell you why. Um, when you look in the Genesis account, in mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 3, mm -hmm. I personally think Adam abdicated his role. Okay. And when Eve stepped in, look at the chaos that happened. Right. So I'm asking myself a question pretty largely. Let's take you're in a foreign country. A church has been planted. Sure. There's no qualified men, but there's a really gifted lady teacher. Does she rise up and teach? Sure. And I, I know of situations where, where women who are like that mm -hmm. instead quietly help train men mm -hmm. to be pastors. Sure. <laughs> um, did it graciously, almost kind of a Priscilla-like sure. approach, um, and graciously waited until there were men leadership mm -hmm. that were available. I know of other situations where they didn't, yep. and, um, and some chaos ensued. Right. So, my, so my challenge to that is... Um, we have to be very careful. No, absolutely. Because if I look at the Genesis account, I think to myself, boy, when men are passive mm -hmm. and women are, are more authoritative sure. and you get the roles reversed, sure. deception is right there near. Yep. It's close, right? Um, I, I, you know, we, we, you and I talked about this yesterday, but look at the, the, the list of denominations and churches that it started with. Yep. We're going to ordain women to yep. be pastors and elders. Mm -hmm. And then now it's, we're going to ordain homosexuals. We're going to ordain right. transgenders. We're going to ordain, and it's just on and on and on the list goes. And you think right. when the gender roles get distorted, deception seems to be really close sure. there for a reason, yeah. right? Uh, now, now the second question, can they tag team or can they, t can they dual teach? Sure. I personally think that can happen. And I, I think it can happen in, in a variety of settings. I think the venue I think the role of the, the, the man who's leading that is important okay. into this. Um, and I also think that it can happen in ways like particularly teaching about marriage sure. or teaching about parenting yep. or <clears throat> some topics like that. We were at a marriage conference years ago, and Ray and uh, Janie Ortland taught, and they both did a fantastic job. And I appreciated their interaction as husband and wife and how he would say he would lead the session in to say, now, right. now Janie's going to teach on this particular issue and uh, ladies, she's gonna be talking to you on this, and right. she came in and supplemented and supported right. what he had Which addressed. Which a perfect model of what's yes. supposed to happen in the church right That's there. That's right. Yeah. I, I think that can happen mm -hmm. that way. I think that where we get off the rails is we turn the teaching pull, the teaching platform over to the woman to teach with authority sure. that maybe she has not been given. Sure. So you bring up a point. Uh, teaching together in the church is one thing, um, or, or teaching in the church is, is one thing. Um, specifically, once again, we're talking about roles in the church. Yes. So what do you do with this question right here? Um, is there room for a woman to teach the Bible in a seminary class or even a cr Christian college? Yeah. Um, Christian high school. Yeah. What do you do with that one? Yeah. I mean, I, I think again, 
you know, um, I don't know. Okay. Just being fair. Yeah. Um, I think that there are dynamic women teachers. Yep. Um, now, I think that because it's a volitional choice to take that class, sure. I think a man is determining, it's taught by a woman, and I know she's a good teacher. I'm going to learn under her. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. I think that that is a choice that they make. Mm -hmm. I think where it gets different is when you roll into the church. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one thing I, I think is clear. You know, again, you, you mentioned a minute ago, just, and you can emphasize, the, in the church. Mm -hmm. In the church, these are the directives. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I think of, like, how education, education used to be attached to the church. Totally. So, you know, I, that would be, be different as well. Sure. I mean, I think that that, that would have some framework that have to be put together by the elders and the, and the pastors on, on the staff. Sure. Um, I would not be uncomfortable with it mm -hmm. as far as, like, um, you know, if a guy... I mean, I, I know of a situation where um, uh, some of our graduates have gone to a particular university, a Christian university, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they were deeply affected by a sermon in a chapel service by a woman teacher. Mm -hmm. um, and I listened to it mm -hmm. uh, because I wanted to hear what they were affected by. Sure. What she taught was fantastic. It was unreal. Right. I, I just didn't know if it was her place to do that. Copy. Okay. Just in my heart. I just... Okay. I wrestled with why they gave her that platform, why she had that. At the same time, the content was off the charts, sure. right? And it was had to do with um, the political climate of the day and the cultural climate of the day and dealing with divisiveness and mm. all this stuff. And it was really, really well done. Right. So um, I, I don't know. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's just some situation like that I don't know. Right. You, uh, somebody asked me recently, like, what do you do with the preset classes? You know, sure. so we're started by Kay Arthur, a woman, sure. a fantastic woman Bible yep. teacher. Um, you take uh, even Beth Moore to some degree. They're good Bible teachers. Right, right. Um, what do you do with those kind of settings? Sure. And, and like, what, what this, sure. this one person asked me. You can me, tell there's a talent there. Yeah, right. or a gift, and mm -hmm. uh, certainly. And you say, what do you do with those situations if, if say, they're putting on a woman's conference and dudes sure. show up? Well, my sure. response to that is, well, the dudes are making that decision to go to that. Yeah, okay. Versus we're having church every Sunday. The pastors are leading the church, and it's like that's a church you've chosen, you, you're attending, right. and they just then put a woman up on stage to teach authoritatively. Right. And you've got to do the rest. Of, that's different sure. than... You know, that's why I've said in our meeting, it's kind of based on venue. Sure. And it's based on the authorities that are there. Sure. And how they're handling that. I think those are sure. the things that concern me. You know, when, when certain mm -hmm. questions like this uh, comes up, I'm always wondering what, what the root is of the question. And there's a part of me that says, we have such a hang up with wondering why cannot women be <coughs> pastors? Why can women not do this? And I think there's an underlying notion there. I'm saying, see, if I'm not a pastor, if I'm not an elder, therefore I don't have a place in ministry. And I think that is completely an inaccurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We hit that in the sermon hard. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, um, I, I I totally agree with you. I mean, I I think that men men could men who are not elders could say the same thing. I and mean, we, and we do it all the time. We do. I mean, absolutely. <laughs> You know, guys yeah. would say, wait a minute, how come I wasn't chosen to be an elder? And I, I've i got my family in order. I'm a good Bible teacher. Right. I, sure. you know, I can do this. And I think uh, the same thing could be said for those guys. Sure. But I, I think that they would have to rest in, first, the care for God right. in their lives. And secondly, uh, the care of the elders that love them and care sure. for them. Absolutely. Uh, slightly different direction. Um, does the word helper that's found in Genesis 2.18 imply the same thing when we look at women are to be submissive or subordinate to men. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. I, 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 um, I think the word, now I do think that the created order implies something. Okay. Men are created first, then, okay. you know. And, and, and how are you separating the two? Well, you have, so because the woman was made as a helper, I mean, I want to say that, I want to phrase this appropriately, but mm -hmm. I think that women can be helpers without being, necessarily subordinate sure or uh, to use that term it used sure or to be submissive right um and i um so an example let me let's give an example um uh well i'll, I'll use in my, in my office uh christina is our my assistant sure but her her authority is her husband sure right so if toby enters into the world and says you know christina i really don't i'm not comfortable with you doing that for sure. dave i as the elder need to submit to that sure yeah Right? You see what I'm saying? Yep, that's a great example. And so, um, if now I'm, she's submissive to me as her boss, mm -hmm. but she's also helping me. Sure. Uh, she has a unique role in that regard. She helps all of us. Right, right. But you see what I'm, you see what I'm saying? Yep. Now, 
if my wife were serving as my assistant, mm -hmm. right, there's going to be a different authority sure. and submission because she's yeah. my wife, yep. right? Different dynamic. At least. Di complete, yeah, different yeah, dynamic right. in, a, in a different role. So right. that's why I say I, I think that a woman could be a helper without mm -hmm. being submissive sure. in that sense. Right. And I don't think that that role, I don't think that helper just implies submissiveness. Sure. I think the role helper really does mean, I think it means a compliment. Right, right, <laughs> if right. you want to know what I honestly think, I really yeah. believe that God made woman because man needed a compliment. Sure. He needed, he, he needed some completion. Right. Um, you know, we, we live in a world, and this is the thing, you, you probably remember, so when I was growing up, we had all the 80s sitcoms that kind of came along. Mm -hmm. And so there's still to be this slowly thing in the sitcoms that dad was a big dummy. Oh, sure. Yeah. Right. Well, you look back in the 60s and 50s, you had Father Knows Best, you had Andy Griffith's show, you Leave had... Leave it to Beaver. And Leave it to Beaver. And Dad, Dad yep. was this leader. He was reading yep. the newspaper. Mom's yep. doing her thing. And there was this yep. complimentary thing. Well, then slowly but surely, Dad started looking like, a, like the dipstick, yep. and, Ma, and Mom was the smart one. Right, right. And before you know it, it was no longer them complimenting one another. Yep. It was, no, Mom is better than Dad. Sure. And Dad's the big dummy that sure. just, you know, kind of needs to get... He can't keep his socks clean, you right, know, right. kind of thing. Yep. Well, I think that's a... That's what's happened. And sure. so I think our society has moved us down this mm -hmm. road that doesn't realize when you when 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 genders are complimenting one another, right. there is such strength in both genders. Sure. There is joy in both genders. Sure. There is satisfaction. Yep. There is uh, happiness. Sure. There's order. There's peace. A uh, lot more can get done. Oh man! I mean, I think in my own home, you know, the the compliment that my wife is to me. Oh. Um, I think we look around here at our staff, and I think the compliment the women on our staff are to us. Sure. Uh, but I mean, good grief, where, we, 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 where yeah. would we be without these gals? So I, I just look back and I think to myself, if we would see that role as helper, as, a, as complementing sure. the role of a leader, sure. or the role of leaders, yeah. it, would, it would help us. I think it would help the framework a little bit yeah. more. I, I like that, that visual that you have of, of when it comes to um, completing, you know. Uh, filling the void, you know, in order to um, kind of uh, take on that task. You know, sure. my wife and I kid around saying, you know, where I say, hey, I do letters, you do numbers. <laughs> yeah. it, when it comes to math, oh, I'm, not, I'm not your guy. You know, oh, yeah. if it comes to something that needs to be written, I can help out here, yeah, sure. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But yeah, it's, but still with that task, you know, or, or the objectives of just everyday life be able to be completed, not as well. <laughs> no, absolutely. So, and, and the perspective, I mean, oh. You know, that's one of the things that really changed Jill and I's marriage was when we began to realize that, that we both have such disagreements. Sure. Different perspectives that make the, the perspective more complete. Sure, absolutely. Let's, uh, let's have this as our final question for the day. Is it okay, in perhaps strange or unideal circumstances, for a woman to fill a more authoritative role in a church, even temporarily, like Zipporah circumcising her son, something only male priesthood later was supposed to do in Exodus 4, 24 through 26, or Deborah being the judge of Israel in Judges 4? Yeah, I think that's a great question. I, I, think you, I think you look at both of those examples, and in both situations, the men were disobedient. Okay. Um, so this kind of ties into our, our earlier question. On saying, what happens when the man's not leading? It does, but I do want to say something about this, though, because you're going to notice this. I, I think this is fascinating, um, and I'm going to tie it to the family in a second. Cool. So... You do have those two situations, and even even in Deborah's situation as well, the Lord prophetically told her, this is going to be to shame men. Sure. And with Zipporah, you know, I mean, here she is circumcising her sons and, and, uh, and doing what Moses should have been doing. Right. Because Moses was disobedient. Yep. Now, what's intriguing is there are moments, and we all know this, there's moments in a family's time mm -hmm. When the dad has to leave home and delegates authority to the mom. Sure. Right? Now, so I think that there are moments when that happens. I think it's outside the norm. Okay. Now, that doesn't mean that she's operating outside the authority of, of the husband. Sure. But she is the delegated authority in that moment right, to right. kind of run the house or do whatever is, right. as dad is gone, you know? Right. So now, I like you probably do as well, I tell my kids, look, man, you disobey mama, you're disobeying daddy. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, and there'll be some things to deal with if you do that. Mm -hmm. Um, so now how that plays out in the church, I think that's why you have the plurality of elders Sure. so that you have a delegated authority. So there's more than one, right? Uh, because I, not one man can lead God's church. Sure. I, I just, I'm convinced sure. of that. Well, I mean, it's, it's not, cannot lead God's church well. Yeah. And I'm convinced that that's just the case. And sure. I look, I, 
I was never a solo guy when I passed, started the church here at CLF. Right. And I thank God for that, for men like Bill and Mike, who've been right. with me for these all these years. And then sure. I thank God for the other elders yep. that are on our team that have blended in so well. Yep. I, I feel strongly what I love about the plurality of elders is you can leave and you know that the church is still moving sure. forward. Sure. So to answer your question is I don't think it's the norm. Yep. Um, I think it's a, it's a danger for us to make at, to make doctrine and and rule right. things that are really the exception to the norm. Right. And even if you read right. those examples you mentioned, you're going to notice that God was not pleased with those situations. Right. right. Um, even though in Deborah's situation, he brought about a great victory. Right. But Deborah, Deborah was a reluctant leader. Right. Well, even even in this, and even in, in <coughs> the, the, the the person writing this question, even you know mentions even temporarily. But still, that would go back to what you were saying about the truth being misapplied. Right. This is an ideal, but it doesn't take away from the fact that what I want, what is ideal yep. in God's eyes, looks like this. That's exactly right. Right. Yeah, and I would say, I would, I would even add to that again, you know, like what people have done with Deborah, they, if they've said, this is God speaking about how things are done politically. Sure. And my response to that is, again, in the New Testament, we can only see clearly about the church and the family. Yep. Um, what is done politically, you know, should we have a woman president, mm -hmm. all those various things. I, I, where scripture speaks, we speak, where it doesn't speak, right. we're silent. Right, right. I, my question for her would be, is this good for your family? Sure. Is it, is it something you and your husband have agreed upon? Right. Are you guys prepared for this? All the various things that go with that. Um, you know, but that, you know, wouldn't have, probably wouldn't be having those discussions, right, right, right. <laughs> but those would be the things I'd be wondering. Yeah. Um, do, do, but would I vote for a candidate who is a woman? <clears throat> That's the best candidate available. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Sure. Sure. We're kind of just getting started with the gender roles. Mm -hmm. Here comes part two. Yeah. What do we have look to, to look forward to? Yeah. So this, this I mean, this Sunday we're going to, we're going to spend some time going back to the, the, to the Genesis scene a little bit, exploring okay. the created order. Okay. We're going to talk about the deception that happened with Eve. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about the gospels, transformation of that in our life. Okay. And we're going to talk about Eve's, that deset, that word where it says Adam was not deceived, but she was, and how that affects leadership in the church. Sure. Um, and then, and then we're going to finish it up with the really hard verse about you know sure. a woman being saved through childbirth and all that right. stuff, which is a weird verse. And, totally, you know, which is yep. awesome. Yep. So, yeah, very good. Well, I think I, I speak on behalf of everyone here at CLF, and we would say that we're we're not only appreciative of you, Pastor Dave, but we're appreciative of the entire elder team. On, they're, they're never hesitant on taking on these hard mm -hmm. subjects and sure. us getting into Scripture and having these conversations. Even though we may disagree on this, that, or the other thing, we're willing to have that conversation. And sure. I think that's something that we not only learned you know, or reiterated uh, from our Redemption series, um, but it's mm -hmm. definitely something that the world has to get back on track with, is having these conversations, yeah. and especially within the church. Absolutely. So, agree. On that note, CLF, uh, we hope that you continue to send in your questions to us. Continue to send them into church at clfroseburg.com. And like always, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with everything CLF. And we will see you this Sunday. All right, see you Sunday.